Synthetic Biomanufacturing Center or Synthetic Bioproduct Center was really created around the idea of how do we take and create products that are green, that take things that are predominantly waste, to be honest with you, and convert those into something that's useful. Part of the drive of all of us is how do we make that happen? When you think of what a cell can do, a cell is really a little factory. And in that factory, it can make all kinds of chemicals and all kinds of other products. And the idea that we can go in, add a little piece of DNA, do a little tweaks to make that factory produce something that, is, that, that actually is marketable and can benefit society, that was a very exciting idea for all of us. My own work is on spider silk and how do we create products out of that. Spider silk is unique in the sense that it has a strength greater than Kevlar and an elasticity greater than nylon. There are no man-made nor natural products that even come close to having this combination of properties. The problem with spiders is you can't farm them. So what my lab has done is taken the gene from the spider and moved it in to various other organisms to make the spider silk protein for us. So we use bacteria, we have transgenic goats that produce the spider silk protein in the milk, we've made transgenic silkworms so they make a combination of their silk and our silk in their cocoons. What we've learned is, is that we can make a variety of products, not just fibers. We've actually been able to make gels, we can make coatings, we can make films, we can actually make some amazing adhesives. So the product range is actually huge. We're looking at everything from coatings of biomedical products to things like artificial ligaments and tendons, composite materials for aircraft and for cars, um, and, and actually even looking at things like sportswear and climbing ropes. We don't just do spider silk, but we also have looked at some other potential bioproducts. Fungicides is one example. Crop fungicides are really important. It's something like a 15 to 20 billion dollar a year uh, market to combat crop diseases around the world. And these are, these are big crops. Uh, the big staple crops like wheat, rice, corn, uh, critical for food security. What we are doing is, um, well, we've discovered a new class of, of fungicides that we thought could be appropriate for crop diseases. Our approach is to use canamycin, which is uh, an old classical antibiotic, abundant. Um, we can get it very inexpensively in large quantities and use that as a starting material to, ma to make our fungicide. And what we do is we chemically modify it using green chemistry methods, and voila, we come up with a, with a, with a fungicide. Um, so the way we approach it is to use large amounts of the starting material and a simple method to get to the end product. That allows you to have a scalable production process. We also have people who are studying how to generate algae and take advantage of algae from waste ponds. Most waste is transported in water, and water is a valuable resource, a valuable commodity in the West. We want to save that water as much as possible, treat it, and use it. So what we're doing is to utilize the water and the chemicals in the water to grow algae to make bioproducts. The process we use to generate value bioproducts from waste is a process similar to farming. Our crop is algae, so our fertilizer, or the nutrients in wastewater. When you grow the crop, you need to harvest the crop. So we're involved in harvesting using new methods of biofilm reactors to grow the algae. Once you harvest the crop, you need to pre-treat it. So we have to concentrate it, we have to store it. And then once you do that, you process it into these bioproducts. The bioproducts that we make here, bio oil, crude bio oil, uh, we also make methane or biogas from anaerobic digestion. We make uh, biomaterials like fish, fish food and food for dairy and swine. And we also make bioplastics. We're using a biofilm process versus a suspension process. This makes the system scalable. And so now we're looking at scaling the system up uh, to pounds and kilograms per day from what we might do in the lab might be grams or sub kilograms per day. We've reached the stage where we combine both basic research and a real drive toward commercialization. So we actually have specific people who are part of the team who help us to move toward commercialization, to think about how to make products, to get together with companies, ask them what do they need us to make. 
One of the most important things for the SBC to me is to be able to see young students come in, learn and grow in a new area that is going to be very important in the future. It's nice as a student to be able to come up with real solutions to real problems. And we're not just playing around with test tubes and beakers and we're not just reading textbooks, but we're really coming up with solutions for problems that we're going to face in the future. It's, it's a cool thing. It's, it's really appealing to me and, I, and it's nice to know that we're making a difference.